Genesis 36, here you have a long list, we're told, of the kings of Edom that reigned all around the people of Israel. And verse 31 just comments, these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. So you can better understand why later Israel say to God, we want a king like the nations all around us. You see how the Bible seamlessly connects in its message. And of course, God's message was, but I am your king. Yes, I'm your invisible king, but you want a visible human king. By doing that, you're rejecting me. So Israel would intend it to be unusual in that all the other tribes had their visible king. And we, we read about them here. They were surrounded by peoples who had visible kings. And God said, no, you are not to have a visible king. I am your leader. I am your king. And it's the same with us. Everybody wants to be part of this religion, that group, that denomination with this visible figurehead. But we have an invisible leader. And that is the Lord Jesus and ultimately God himself as our king. And our tempt temptation is to want to be like the world around us, to have a human leader. Because it is hard for us to enter into personal relationship with God, to actually feel that I've got somebody, yes, I've got a leader. We are wired to want to have some leadership. We are sheep and we want to have a shepherd. We have the shepherd. God was the shepherd of his people. The Lord Jesus is the good shepherd. And yet our tendency is to want to trust in man, to want to have this visible structure of religion or leadership or elders or founding fathers who are all fallible men. We've got leadership. If you are in that personal relationship with God and the Lord Jesus, you will sense that you have someone over you, leading you, whom you can trust.